Europe. What's going on, people? What's up, my people? How y'all feeling today? We have...
That's crazy. 
which is your mind, is the same concept here. Your mind lit up your dream. Your mind lit up your reality. Your mind likes this reality. Because this reality is not even real. The sun is not real. The body is not real. It's only all mental. If you understand how your eyes work. Right? Come on, guys. Stay focused in the room. Stay focused. Because some of y'all don't even care about the knowledge. Y'all just being fans. But you still need to let the people that care about the knowledge listen. Don't distract them. So, in this reality, we know that this reality is not real. Simply for the fact that you use your eyes, right? When you use your eyes, we know these are eyeballs. I'm just going to do this. It's going to probably freak you out. But remember, your eyes are eyeballs. This is the reality and the science of everything that's going on. So these eyeballs, they have a function. And they bring in photons or electrical signals. The eyeball is connected to an optical nerve, like a wire. That optical nerve is connected to your brain. And everything is connected to your nervous system, which is connected to your brain. Your brain, which is the central operational center. It's the CPU, right? You know, so the computer programming unit. So this is what's computing everything. Your brain is a computer. It computes all of the electrical signals. And just like on a computer, you have the computer, which should be this box, right? which processes, it's a processing unit. It processes everything that you are seeing on the screen, right? Listen very carefully, this is very important. So your eyes are connected to an optical nerve like a wire connected to your brain inside the skull. So you see, your skull is, your brain is encased in darkness in your skull. So if your brain is encased in this darkness, how can your brain receiving the electrical signals from your eyes of something that's external tell you what's external if your brain is inside darkness? Your brain is inside encased in darkness. It can't tell you what's on the outside because it has never seen the outside. So what we see on the outside is not actually coming in. It's actually a projection. Your brain is telling you what you're seeing. Your brain is telling you what you're feeling. You're running. Just like the computer. The computer, the monitor doesn't tell the computer what it's seeing. Or what it's, no, the computer has the program on it, has the software on it, and is sending that software and playing it out and projecting it out on the screen. So this reality is a projection. I don't know if you can understand what I'm saying to you, but this reality is a projection. Your body is a projection. All of your, your feelings are projections of a program. And so you are walking in a simulation, a virtual type world. Your body is just an avatar of that program. And everything that you're experiencing as a mind is a program. But once you understand this, then you start to live life differently. Because this is very important to understand. But once you know the truth, and look at the viewers going down when I start teaching. You see that? You see what I'm saying? You see the viewers? It went down. I told you. This is why I do so, once you understand how this reality works, it's very important. You, then, you, then you stop fearing death. Then you start living life right because you're like, okay, wait a minute, why am I here then? What kind of program is this? What is the program? You want to understand the program so you become lucid in this dream. So that you can understand why you're here. I mean, you know for a fact, you know for a fact that you keep waking up here. You keep eating, you keep peeing, you keep pooping, and you do certain things redundantly, you know, and you have to ask yourself the question, what am I doing here? Why do I keep coming back here? Like, I go to sleep, I wake up, I come back here. This is something, why are things, and then you study nature. Nature is like the real reality, right? We live in this fake, fabricated world. This glass, this, all of these materials have been alchemized from nature. The door, the wall. Everything that you see around you has been alchemized from nature. 
Okay, so let's bring our reality down. Everything you see in Babylon comes from nature. It's been alchemized from that matrix that we live in a, in a false matrix made from a real matrix. So we have to come out of a false matrix and come into the real matrix. Once we come into the real matrix, what we see is that everything is just fabricated. That we're not living and studying ourselves properly because we need to study the source of what everything is. So your, your, your school, your school books, all of that knowledge, everything that you, everything around you, your car, your wheels of your car, your phone, everything in this sponge, this bottle right here, everything comes from that source. And we live in this fabricated world made from that source. Even our money is backed by natural resources. And um, we give things like products, you know, value. Depending on what humans are wanting with us, we, we program them to want it, or they, they need this, right? Depending on what our natural needs are, those are what things that make the natural resources valuable. And then we steal that from Africa, and we make this fake, fake world that we live in. But it's not real. This matrix that you're in is not real. Now, my job is to try to get you a bottom out of the boxes, out of seeing reality for what it really is. Because once you see reality for what it is, and you apply the knowledge to your life, you become God or goddess, straight up. But first, you gotta really know what's going on because it's just surreal to blow your mind once you really understand reality for what it truly is. So now we know that all material, your house, your car, your shoes, your clothes, comes from the real matrix, nature. So we must not put our minds in the fake alternated version of nature which we have created. We must put our minds in the actual natural world of the source of where we can come from. And then when you look out at nature, we start asking questions. This is called science. Science is the observation and the study of the natural world. When you start studying natural world, you start to come up with answers that you never had before. The phenomenon of the mind. You know, how does reality work? What is really going on here? Right? What is what is the mind? What is the body like? Is the body the mind? Is the mind or do we live inside of our body? Of course not. You can't live inside of your body. You you your body lives inside of you. And once you understand this, I used to think that I lived inside my body and I was a soul that was in my body and then I would die and then because I seen funerals and I seen people die, I thought that that was what's gonna happen to me. And so I look deeper into the circumstances. The person that's in that casket, their mind is not in that casket. You are your mind. We are subjectively experiencing a person die to send us an understanding of what we're doing wrong in living. So if we examine the reason why a person died, you would understand why we, why we see death. Why do we have funerals? Why do we see human beings die? Because we're living the wrong way. And we were never supposed to die. We're never supposed to die at all. But when you see people dying, and you see in the casket, the body is left behind only for us to do the autopsy so that we can study and know what we've done wrong. And this way we stop doing it and evolve and become immortal again. That's the only reason why death or that understanding of death exists. And it's to scare us. It is to scare us. It's to make us stop and think like, okay, cool, we need to eat better. Okay, cool, we need to learn from what this is. That's the only reason for that. Truth, truthfully, when someone is sleep, when someone is sleeping, when someone is sleeping next to you, they are not sleeping. Their mind, which is who they truly are, is up and running somewhere else, and they can come back and tell you, "Look, I was over here. I was over there. I was over." They say, "I." No, you wasn't. You was laying in the bed. But who are you then? Because if you was laying in the bed and you just told me a story about you being over here with me in another dimension, then who are you? I'm sleeping next to you and you just told me that you were somewhere else. And I'm like, who are you then? Are you, are you this being? Are you this reality? You see what I'm saying? So with that being stated, we are tapping in and out of realms of minds. We are on different frequencies of minds, different... Um, planes of existence, okay? And once you understand that the outside world, we're not receiving the outside world. We're projecting the world. We're projecting this body. 
this reality doesn't exist, and this is backed up by quantum physics. When you study quantum physics, what we understand is the observer's effect. That the observer's effect shows us, I don't know if you've ever seen this, this, um, the splitting of the electron. The observer's effect is what it's called. If you have it, go research it. Research the quantum theory of the observer's effect. That means is when an electron is observed by an observer, it turns into a particle. It turns into an electron. When it's not being observed, the electron turns into just a potential. It just turns. It's just waves of energy. It's waves of energy, right? But when it's being observed, because it's being observed, it turns into matter. You see what I'm saying? So. We understand that through science, it's not hocus pocus. We understand that that when you are observing reality, it is you that is creating and projecting this program because you're observing it. So when you don't observe it no more, it, it's only a potential. It's only a wave of potential, which means that you are the creator. You are God. And that without you, I can't exist, they can't exist, the, stimu stimu the um, stimulation that you're receiving through the five senses, which govern your reality and your understanding of life, do not exist unless you are there. Are being received because we're taking in, but in is not in. 
there is no end. There is no how. It just is. And you're being projected this reality. Your body is an avatar being projected by your mind. So your body is inside your mind. My body is my mind. You know? So we make music to remind you. All our music is based in the five sciences. So if you go to Carbonation, um, t- uh, what is it? Music? No, it's Carbonation Productions. Carbonation Productions. On IG, you hear our music. We got it on sound.
like for instance, the word ego. If you let go of your anger, ego, you don't know what ego is. Ego is just a sense of self. You cannot not have an ego. What people are saying is that you're being arrogant. You're being self-centered. You're being cocky. They use the word ego, but that's the wrong thing to use. People want to say, I want you to be humble. Just be humble. That's what people are trying to make you say. That's what they want to say. But they misconstrued it just like that Jesus. They made Jesus white, but never look at the message of the Christ. The Christ, that's the importance of Jesus. Not his color, not if it's a he or a she, it's the Christ. That's what about Jesus. But we misconstrue these things. And if you're not wise enough to decipher and decode these things, you're going to get caught up in the riffraff. So, when, what we teach you is about your script, which is your ego, which is your personality. You have a personality within all of the broken parallel universes of you as everybody else. Everybody else is you as well. It is important that you know thyself in the universe or the movie that you are playing. So you have your character and then you have all these other characters that are also you too because you are the observer. So everybody that you talk to, everybody that you argue with, everybody that you like and don't like are just versions of yourself. They're parallel universes of you. Everything is. Everything is the wall, the mirror, everything. Everything is your mind. So when we say ego, the ego is just one sense of self. You can have a false ego like most people. People don't know thyself, so they have a false sense of self. To have the true ego is to have the I am consciousness. That is the true ego. The ego that I'm giving you right now. But also, there's two sides of it. There's the understanding that you are God, the omnipotent oneness, the omnipotent one that nothing can exist without you observing it, point blank, period, you are the mind. And then there's the limitation. That's just what we call the first one is called the Father. The Father, not meaning like a Father like a man. But when Jesus was saying Father, he wasn't saying Father like a man, my Father. He was saying my Father, which means my higher self which is farther away and I'm being projected here. If I'm being, if you're a kind of yourself and you're up here, but you project yourself into a limitation of yourself, you're going to say, my father, which is my most high self, my being, my, the son is projecting us here, obviously. So you would say, my father, what he was saying was my F-A-R-T-H-E-R, not my father, like a birth of a father. No, what Jesus was saying, my father, my higher self, which has nothing to do with gender and everything to do with energy and your higher self of thoughts. So me and my father are one. So if I'm limited, like right now, you have your character, your being, which is limited. It is not your omnipotent oneness of what you are. You have an ego. Your ego is who you are in this movie that we're in limitations you're the, the smaller version as you have um, as above so below so you have a higher self that you're projecting from which is your father which is your father self oh I got this light on the light on all because I'm I think I got right alright so you are your father self you are your father self and so we call that the we call that God we call that the oneness of what we all are this is the father okay it's not a man not a man in the sky this is your higher self which is actually just a complete balance between male and female which masculine and feminine is complete oneness there is no God is a man shit no it's just complete oneness and so we are projecting here Remember, the first understanding is to understand that you are projecting here as two things at once. You are the oneness, the I am you. We realize when we come into the kingdom of God or the Father. Everything is me. And without me, it doesn't exist. It's just a potential or a wave in darkness. So I observe it. When I observe it, it exists. So therefore, I'm the creator. So therefore, when I am God, even in my limitation of God, I am God. So when Jesus was talking about his father, he first was, he entered the kingdom of God. He was the Christ conscious. So 
So at first we understand that, that's cool. There's another component about it. So now this being comes down to human form through DNA, and now you are limited. You are a demigod. You are demigods. And so you're limited in your actions because you're in this plane, yet you become a walking god when you realize what you truly are. So now, this is you right here, the ego. You become one of those right here. And this is where you have your astrological energy, which is a piece of what you are. So you are not only a piece of what you are, of the all, you are actually the all and a piece of the all at the same time. You are the all and a piece of the all at the same time. So your ego, you must embrace it because it's your, it is your script. It is your character in the story of life. You must embrace it. You must understand your flaws and the things that you're supposed to learn through Pluto and Saturn. Pluto and Saturn is teaching you your lessons on what you need to learn through. It's already been written already. So the universe is a cycle and we're actually, all, this already happened in the Father. In the Father, this already happened. But we are here to play it out, feel it, and respond to it. You think that you have free will, but you don't because the universe is just happening through you. It's a storyline. And so we're here to experience this storyline and our limitations where we act like we don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. I've seen the numbers. Ooh, you know, just to experience it. You just know everything. It's just are not any fun. But when you come and limit yourself, you can experience it. So a God has limited itself <clears throat> in a lower version of itself, in a demigod, and through DNA. And this software, God gets to experience itself by not knowing what's going to happen and being all-knowing. You're not all-knowing. You're not supposed to be all-knowing. You're here to experience the all-knowing. So you're here as a character in it. If you can understand all of this, then at the end of the day, you become someone that is one with the Father. You become a walking God and Goddess, but still limited, not knowing too much. Because you don't want to know too much. And if you know too much, it's no fun. You don't get to experience it. So life is, there is no free will. Life is happening. Even your decisions that you're making, even you all up in your feelings, you're just in a character. That character is part of the universe happening. So your decisions that you think you're making, your free will, it's not so free because the universe has already written it out, it's already happened. So once you realize this, you realize this is just a fucking play, it's playing out. You understand? And your your choices and everything that you do that makes you feel like you have control is just a part of the play out of the all. It's just playing out. And you don't really have a choice. You're just here to experience what already happened. This is what Deja Vu is about. Deja Vu is when you get little glimpses that this shit already happened. Because it already did. And you're like, yo, yo, I, I dreamed about this. You know why? Because it already happened. It's a glitch in the system. It already happened. And your mind is here to be limited to experience it to get the outcome of all of it. See? So you know. Look it up. 
there's just a sense of what someone thinks they are. We can have a false ego, we can have a, a divine ego. The divine ego is the I am, I am God. I am the Father. This is what Jesus said. Ye are gods. Each one of you are God. You just don't know it. I am God. And when, that's why they hurt them at that time. Because uh, politically, him saying that was just against so many laws. It was the Christ. And you must come into the Christ. You must come into the understanding that I am the Father and the Father is in me. Have you seen me? You've seen my Father in heaven. Heaven means your higher self. So, this is the kingdom of God. And I'm giving you your Godhood. If you can accept this and understand it, study through the five signs as a combination, you're going to be all right. You're going to be straight. So the ego is nothing more than what you truly are. So when I give you an astrological chart, what you're studying is your character, your role. You see? Now you know why. Here is your script. Before you was living, you didn't even know who the fuck you was. You didn't know why. But okay, now what I do is, in the movie of God, remember, you're, you're God, but you're also limited in your version of God simultaneously. So you're the higher self and the lower self. Or the limitation of which you are as well to experience what already happened. So in your character, some of us, some of us are gods. We're chosen, we're enabled, our DNA is enabled to understand these concepts, what I'm saying to you. There's very few people that can understand these concepts, and these are the children of God. These are the children of God, not the Israelites. A lot of people say, oh, we got shipped here on boats, and that's the history, and we're Israelites. But that doesn't make you God's children. Well, you already spoke about it in Matthew 10. Oh, Matthew, is it? Let me see. John 1. In John 1, it clearly shows you that becoming God has nothing to do with God's children. The people that can understand these concepts of what I'm saying to you has nothing to do with you being African American, has nothing to do with none of that. It has everything to do with being, because Jesus was a Jew, it has everything to do with being able to understand the concepts that I'm giving you. One, if you can understand that in your life, then your name is in the book of life, which means you will receive eternal life. If you can't understand these concepts, then you're fucked. You're just an extra in the movie. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter. Here's your energy. It doesn't matter. So those of us that do understand is coming to our God of gods and demigods. We're activated and named in this. That whole bunch of disciples deserted Jesus. He says, this is why I tell you. And at least you are enabled by the Father by DNA and decision that's already been made. Unless you was already chosen, you will not receive the kingdom of God. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm teaching you the gospel right now. This is the true gospel. This is it. This is the knowledge that we're all supposed to have. We're supposed to abide by it. Okay, so the ego is your astrological energy, your true self. That is who you are in your limitation. Right? So